questions for Christadelphians about infant mortality. Christadelphians give a narrow explanation of the word sin. Here's a quotation. Here then is the explanation of why we die. It is because of sin, which is defined as the transgression of God's law. Citing the first letter of John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Quoting this out of context, by the way. The statement that we die because of sin suggests that death is a direct consequence of individual transgression. However, infant mortality raises questions about the fairness and justice of this understanding. Infants who die at a young age cannot be held accountable for personal transgressions since they lack the cognitive and moral capacity to understand and commit sins. It would be unjust to attribute their deaths solely to their own transgression of God's law. Lack of moral agency. Infant mortality raises questions about the concept of sin as the transgression of the law because newborn infants lack the cognitive and moral capacity to consciously violate divine laws. How can infants who have not yet developed the ability to understand or make moral choices be held responsible for transgressing God's law? If sin is solely defined as the transgression of the law, how do we explain the suffering and death of infants who have not committed any personal sins? If sin is individual and based on personal actions, acts of transgression, it becomes challenging to reconcile the idea that infants who have not yet had the opportunity to commit any personal transgressions have experienced mortality as a consequence of their own sins. The Bible speaks about infant mortality. The Bible acknowledges the reality of infant mortality and records instances of infants and young children dying. Here are a few examples. King David's son in 2 Samuel chapter 12 verses 15 to 23 King David's infant son falls ill and eventually dies. Despite David's prayers and fasting, the child passes away. This story portrays the anguish experienced by David and is acknowledgement that he cannot bring the child back. It reflects the painful reality of infant mortality. Another case of um, infant mortality recorded in the Bible is the deaths of the Egyptian firstborn. During the time of Moses, God brought plagues upon Egypt to secure the release of the Israelites from slavery. One of these plagues involved the death of the firstborn, including infants, in every Egyptian household. See Exodus chapter 11 verses 4 to 6. This event highlights the tragic consequence of God's judgment upon Egypt. These biblical accounts acknowledge the existence of infant mortality and demonstrate how it has been part of human experience throughout history. Inherited sin, the concept of inherited sin, comes from the account of Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden and subsequent passages that discuss its effects. Here are the key verses commonly cited in relation to inherited sin. Sin in the flesh. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. The Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people, because all sinned, Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. This verse is often interpreted to mean that sin entered the world through Adam's disobedience and as a result death 
and its consequences, including infant mortality, have affected all humanity. It should be noted as well that we do not die because we break God's law. We die because of inherited sin. That physical element of the animal nature, which is the source of all its diseases, death and resolution into dust. Psalm 51 and verse 5. In Psalm 51, David declares, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. This verse should be interpreted to suggest the idea of inherited sinfulness, implying that David, and by extension, all human beings inherit a sinful nature from birth. These passages then, among others, support the concept of inherited sin. They suggest that all human beings are born with a fallen and sinful nature due to the consequences of Adam's disobedience. If sin is solely defined as the transgression of the law, how can newborn infants who have not yet developed the cognitive abilities to understand and consciously violate laws be held accountable for sin or the transgression of God's law? Is it fair to attribute the consequences of the transgression of God's law such as infant mortality to individuals who have not had the opportunity to make moral choices or exercise free will? If sin is solely the transgression of the law, why do innocent and helpless infants bear the burden of sin through factors beyond their control, such as genetic disorders or environmental factors leading to permanent death? Can the understanding of sin be expanded to include the broader consequences of inherited sin, including the presence of suffering, disease and mortality, rather than limiting it to individual acts of transgression? Like I've said before, we do not die because we have broken God's law. We die because of inherited sin. That physical element of the animal nature, which is the cause of all its diseases, death and resolution into dust. If sin is solely understood as the transgression of the law, how do we explain the suffering and mortality of infants who have not yet reached an age where they are capable of consciously violating divine laws. Is it possible that inherited sin, as described in Psalm 51 and verse 5 and Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, refers to a broader condition of human weakness because of the flesh rather than solely focusing on specific acts of disobedience or transgression. If sin only means the transgression of God's law, how do we address the ethical implications of attributing guilt or moral responsibility to infants who have not personally committed any transgression but are believed to be affected by 